Hey developers, welcome to part two of our Nux.js app. We are creating an iTunes search app and we're using Vutify and Axios. We're going to use a little bit of Vuex. So if you remember correctly, here's our completed app. We can put any artist in here like Jack Johnson and then it'll display all the album art for all the Jack Johnson's albums. It'll give you the name of the album and if you click on it, it'll open the iTunes store on that artist. So let's go back to where we were in the last video and you can see we added this iTunes search bar at the top and it doesn't really do anything right now. Um, but let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. First, we don't need a logo. So if we look back at our layouts, we can see we have this toolbar here. This is the last thing we added. And then it goes into next here. And if we go into our pages, and we'll see here in our pages here is like the default app with everything in it so we're going to go ahead and just delete all these sections we don't need anything here actually what we'll do is we'll leave the top section you see where the logo is this is the logo component but we don't need it right now so we're going to delete this and delete this we're going to delete the import logo from components here and then um, one thing I also want to do is this section class container. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And we're going to go back into the default view. And I just want to make that a part of here. So we're going to add it here. And that way, if you look at this section here, the CSS, there's actually some CSS with a section. And it just adds a little bit um, more to it. it, it it does a, a few changes that we want. Uh, right now it's in the middle of the page, but we'll fix that soon in a minute. And so you can see here that there's a bunch of default HTML and CSS. We're just going to leave that all here for now. We don't care about it at all. And so we now we have the template here. We don't need this logo here. And you can see there's a bunch of CSS here, and we're gonna go ahead and just delete this too, because this is just stuff that comes with it that we don't need. So we'll delete that. Oops. We'll have the opening closing brackets. All right, so now our iTunes search is correct at the top. So let me give you guys just a quick update of all the different directories in Nuxt. So you can see here on the left hand side we have, let me move it a little bit so you can see it. You can see here on the left hand side we have uh, these directories. So, and you can see here um, on the official documentation it tells you a little about it. So the assets folder, yeah, they actually even have readme's here. So that's this, this directory contains your uncompiled assets, less SAS or JavaScript. We can see we have the style we had to use with Vutify in here. Components, this is where all components are. Here's the logo one that it came with. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. We're not gonna use logo. It has readme and here's the toolbar component we created earlier. And this is just like a normal Vue.js component. So you can add in your own export default, your own data, whatever else you want in here. Now layout's a little different. The layout directory contains your application layouts and by default, kind of like we did last week, this is the application, this is the layout that'll happen, that will be attached to every single um, page in your application. You could actually change the layout that you want inside your pages, that's an option, but for um, but for now we're just leave it at the default one and that's one's gonna be used everywhere. So middleware, this is where this directory contains your application middleware. Middleware lets you define custom functions that can be run before rendering. So this is where we can put our server side code. And we can do that, uh, we could set up multiple different middlewares and have every single different page have different middlewares in it. And so you could see, you might wanna, you might wanna do something like that if you're doing some kind of authentication. We're gonna come back to this in a little bit and we're gonna see how we can access the Vuex store. That's one thing you actually have access if you look at this middleware integration. I don't want to get too much into the weeds here, but you have uh, you can export a default function and inside of that you pass in a context and this context has all sorts of stuff. It's hard to see here, but you have app is client 
you have params, you have query, you have the request object, the re response object, redirect error, and it also has uh, the Vuex store. So you can actually access this store, which is cool. And this is all on the server side, so you can put all your private keys, everything in here, you don't have to worry. And then we have the pages. So this is kind of neat. And this is what I want to do now is we're going to create, this is basically in Vue.js, you have the router and you have a router file and you kind of define all your routes in it. The way you do it in Nux is you actually create directories. Uh, you could see right here, go back. Yeah, the page directory contains your application views and routes. The framework reads all the view files in this directory and creates the application router. So it's kind of weird, um, but you can kind of get used to it. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. And we're going to call it results. So this will basically, we're creating a new route called results. And then inside re route uh, results, we're going to create a new file called ID view. And this underscore has a special meaning to, to Nuxt. And what that means when you see this underscore here, it means that the um, that 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 route is actually going to be like a, a param that you can pass to it and you'll see that in a second and we'll also look at our index we don't have anything in it now you can see here here is our app right so far we don't have anything in it and then we have our plugins that we talked about earlier that we created our Vutify plugin and then we have a store uh, static, which is where we put our static files that we can access, and then we have our store. And now the store can be done a couple different ways, and we'll, we'll go over that in a little bit. So let's see if we can uh, make this app, our app here, look kind of like the app we're trying to create. So you can see here we have the search iTunes at the top, and then we just have an input. So that should be easy enough. Let's see if we can do that. So inside our template, it's, you always have to have some kind of tag inside of it, uh, the beginning and opening closing tag, otherwise you'll get an error. So we're gonna just create a div. We're gonna create an H1, search iTunes. Um, we're gonna have a break here. And then I'm gonna create a form. Now we want to, inside this form, we wanna create our input. Input, and we'll put a placeholder in here. This is just basic HTML. Enter artist name. We're gonna have a V model attached to it called search. And that will be good for now. And I guess one more thing we'll add is an autofocus. So that way it has some kind of focus. Now let me see, can you guys see that? Yeah, kind of scrolled off the screen a little bit, but you should be able to see some of it. And since we're using that, let's go ahead and create data. And remember, your, your data function always has to return something. So we'll return, we'll go ahead and return our uh, search. Because otherwise we'll get an error if it doesn't exist. So we're going to save it. Great, we have search iTunes and our artist name. Now, we're going to do some really basic CSS here because obviously we want it in the middle. We don't want it kind of that ugly. So we're going to do style tag here. First, we're just going to have everything um, in the middle. So we're going to do a text align center. And then we're going to do an H1 here. And we're just going to put a little bit of padding on the side. I'm going to save it. Great. So now we have our artist, enter iTunes here, enter artist name. Obviously, if you hit enter, it doesn't do anything. It just refreshes the page. Uh, you can see here, console. So nothing's happening. So we can uh, do a few things here. We What we want to do is we have this new route. We called it ID. And just the heck of it, let's put something in here so we can see it. So we have a template. We'll put a div tag here. And we'll just do a hello world. Hello from results route. And if we open this up and just go to results, you see hello from results route. You can see here that definitely this route's working. We're doing slash results at the top, so that's good to know. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Well, let's leave it the size. So we go back, here's the main one. So let's see if we can just make it so when we hit enter, 
that it goes automatically to that route that we just created. So that should be easy enough. So we have this input, and I'll just so we can see it better, I'm gonna put it right here. And what we need to do is we need to have some action attached to this. So we can actually put it right on the form. So what we want to do on the submit, we can do V on or there's actually a shortcut, which is this at sign. And what this is saying is when we have a submit happening, prevent the default, which is to reload the to, to actually send the action or reload the page there. And we're going to have it trigger an action called submit or method called submit. So now we need to go down and we're going to add something called methods. This is just like normal Vue.js and we're going to call it submit. We can even have an event attached to it if we want to do something with that. And we want it to do something. So let's just for right now, let's do an alert that says hello world. So let's see here, we're going to type in hello. Okay, so now we see we definitely see the pop-up that says hello world, so we know it's working there. But instead we want to change routes. Now uh, there is a router, so you have access to the router by doing this dot dollar sign router and then you can do a push and what this does, it pushes something onto the route and it changes the route. So the easiest thing to do is just type in results here and so we'll compile again. So let's do this. Let's do hello world. All right, so it, it went over to the results route, but we had a problem. It said failed to mount component template render function not defined. So it can't find it because we have, the results route is has this ID evolved with it, so it's looking for us to pass something to it, and it's confused. So we could do something like this, results one, two, three, and we'll go back to here. We'll refresh, we'll do hello world. All right, now it actually went to it because we have to add this param here, it was one, two, three, in our, and it came up fine. Hello from the results route. So that works. So what we can do is instead of sending one, two, three, we can actually send the results of what's inside our search box. So if we go back to the beginning here, we can do string interpolation. This is just basic JavaScript. And we're gonna do this dot search. So what this is saying is when they when you press the button, it's gonna do this submit action, and whatever's in the box is gonna be submitted over. So we'll save it. Now if we do hello world, it still goes to it and it actually sent over the search. So we can actually see the search. If we go back to uh, our ID view here, we do have access to it. So we can see what's coming in through the params. So if we do dollar sign route dot params dot ID, that's what we called it, and we save it. So now if we do, let's say, hello, Eric, you can see hello from result route, hello, Eric. So it actually passed in the params in here. So that's exactly what we wanted. So the video is kind of running long, but this is the second thing to know. So what we've done so far is we've explained all the different directories. We added our form element. We were able to now submit that element and make it to our new route that we created called results. And it has a param called ID so that we can pass in IDs into it. And you can see here, we can now display that ID in that route. So thanks for watching. If you guys like these videos, please click that like button, click that subscribe button. Let me know what you think. I also have um, some books for my Vue.js in action book. I do have some giveaways I'm giving uh, away. So I might be giving away one soon. So keep listening, keep watching the series. I will be giving away some books during this series. So stay tuned. Thanks.